Hi folks, thank you for coming to Back to Basics on Season 3. Today we're going to speak with Dr. Vic Menzo. And we're going to find out what he's all about. But then we're also going to find out what are the mindsets of people when it comes to hard work, working smarter, working harder. I mean, those are the words that we used. And we actually had a great time chatting with each other, understanding what this episode is all about. So why don't we get to know him better and understand what his, his psychoanalysis is when it comes to the episode. So why don't we get in touch with him and talk to him. I'll see you there. Bye, guys. How are you folks? My name is Girish Pally, the host for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics for another week. I usually say that, don't I? And I did say that already in the intro. But let me ask you this. Today, we're going to speak with Dr. Vec, and we're going to find out who he is and what he's all about. He's definitely about mindset. He's definitely about mid uh, businesses. But he's one thing that I did not mention on the uh, on the intro. And He's very humorous. So how about let's get to know him better, what he's all about, and he's about success. So let's be mindful of that. Uh, Vic, how are you? And thank you for uh, coming on Back to Basics. Uh, brother, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm doing uh, amazing for uh, a Wednesday. I had to think about that again. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you again for that. Uh, so can I call you Vic instead of Dr. Vic? I just realized that I was- you can call me whatever you like. I awesome, always, awesome, I, awesome. it's like when I see my patients out in the out of the office and and they're like Dr. Vic. I'm like, just call me Vic, please. Don't <laughs> you don't have to. We're out of the office. So uh, Vic, thank you again for coming on Back to Basics. But before we talk about all the stuff that we're going to talk about, and it's going to be an amazing show, uh, I just have a sense for it. What does Back to Basic mean to you? Who? How deep you want me to go? As as much <laughs> as you want. Back to basic to me is going back to the essence of who we are. You know, we we become human doers instead of human being. And so when I think coming back to the basics, it's it's stepping back into understanding how the quantum world works, because that's really that's the invisible world that all the physical world ties to. And the the coming back to that basic, though, is the soul essence of who we are, the creator of who we are, the choosing of who we are and understanding how that works and being retaught that because like a lot of stuff I teach and there's other stuff out there too, that does this. It's, it's not new. This is old stuff. A lot of stuff I teach is ancient wisdom stuff. And, but it's just that we as humans haven't been over time generations, we've lost the essence of who we really are, Hmm. you know, and, and, and we become so dominant on doing the thing that makes us happy. How do we, what makes us happy? We got to do something. What makes us successful in business? You have to do something. To have a successful relationship, you have to do something. And I'm not saying the action is not important because it is, but there's a whole element underneath that's even bigger. And that's the thing that we don't focus on a lot. Mm. Wow. Uh, Vic, thank you. Thank you again for answering that question. It actually makes me think I might have to listen to this particular part to understand that where that thought process came from. And thank you again for that. You know, uh, Vic, let me ask you this. When are we supposed to work smarter or are we supposed to work harder? You know, the saying you hear it all the time, work smarter, not harder. But in, and yeah. sometimes they put that in the sense of automation in business. Like, I'll oh, just automate things, do this and that. And that's how you're working smarter, not harder, or have your money work for you. And, but there's a different element to this that I share and teach is that you don't have to work as hard to be successful. Um, there's, there's a thing when we look at like energy, right? And so what's energy? A lot of times when I say that, people are like, what's this guy talking about? I'm not talking about like caffeine or a Red Bull or things that make you feel in that certain way. This is, um, in the quantum world, there's, everything is made up of energy. It's what creates the physical world. So what makes the difference between lead and gold is really just the energy of what it's vibrating at. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes in to manifest into the physical realm, it shows up differently. The molecular structure changes and that's why you see it the way it does. And so when you, to kind of tie it all together, it's like athletes in the zone, right? When they're in the zone, if you played a sport, you know what I'm talking about. You've had that moment where like everything slows down hmm. and you can be really effective. Hmm. That doesn't just happen in sports. You do this in life and too, you can get into a flow state. Now flow state means a variety of different things for people, but 
the way I kind of share it is, is that you have no resistance and you're just allowing information to come to you. You're in a flow and energy is flowing. So when you do the work, you actually get things done a lot faster. Hmm. Instead of taking an hour and a half, it takes you a half hour. Hmm. And it's, I call this energy management because it's knowing how to put your energy and intensity focused into one thing and you can knock things down, knock out things a lot faster compared hmm. to doing that way. And when we can do that, we are working smarter now because we're being more effective with our time and we're also being more productive. And what ends up happening is we have more time to do other things. Hmm. So thank you. Thank you again for that. Let me ask you this, because it looks like people have still a hard time with time management. They don't know where to start and they don't know where to finish or they don't know how to plan it. So how do we how do we help them design from the business technology and marketing, how we try to bring things together? How how do how do you design that? How do you tell someone how to design it? There's two things to that, because one is, is, you know, let's think like billionaires, right? Mm. Billionaires, they look at what's the top priority things they need to get done. And it's not a long list. It's like, what's the biggest things that I need to address today? It's usually one or two, maybe three, but that's usually it. That's the first thing you want to do. What's the thing that's going to move the needle to help you become more successful? A lot mm. of times people are doing busy work and they're not doing stuff that's actually going to create long-term growth. Because when you think like a billionaire, like, for example, like Jeff Bezos he came out of a, a quarterly meeting one time and a reporter was like, hey, congratulations in the quarter. You had blah, blah, blah percentage. And Jeff Bezos was like, I don't even know what we made last quarter. He's like, weren't you just in a quarterly meeting? He goes, yeah, the quarter for three years from now. You see, and it's all about looking into that aspect of I lost my train of thought with this, but looking at when we're looking into the how they see things, it's, it's going into that realm of what's going to make uh the biggest growth for you. Hmm. The second thing, and this is a little bit more of a hack, and this takes a, this is something that takes time. You have to get used to it. It's like developing a new, it's not really learning. An, it's not developing a new skill. You know this. It's just hmm. you've forgotten it. It's tapping into that feeling, that thing that gives you inspired action, right? When you get excited to do something. Hmm. When we get excited to do something and we're inspired, you're going to get done things a lot faster. When you're inspired to learn something, you're going to learn things a lot faster. Right. And and we've all gone through this. We've all done it. So there's ways and how do you get into that state in that mode? Because we always in business, when it's about being smarter and more effective, we think time management. But we're not robots. It's not like 30 minutes, I got to do this. And here I go. And then 15 minutes, I got this for here. And then I have to go eat for five or 10 minutes. And I'm going to go over here and do this. That's not, that's mechanistic. That's very human doing, right? Mm. And, and it's about human being. And it's it's more of that coming back to this essence of like, okay, what do I feel inspired in doing today? Mm. That's going to help me then level up and get me excited. What am, what am I getting excited about that I want to work on? That brings a whole different perspective. And a lot of clients I do, and I can get them to that state and working at that level, it really is a game changer for them because then all of a sudden they're like, man, I went to work on this. I was supposed to do these two other projects, but I felt like I needed to do this one and I felt excited to do it. One, I got done very quickly. Second, it was a huge success. I don't mm. understand how. I, then I pushed the other two out because I felt like I just needed to get them out there because this one was successful. And those two, were dud, those two projects were duds, but this one became successful. Mm. I was like, because you were inspired to do that one. That's why. So Vic, let me ask you this. And thank you again for that. What makes you excited? I'm going to go and ask you that question now. Life. I know that's a very basic answer, but it's, 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 Every day, having the opportunity to learn and grow and, and, and evolve as a human being. Mm. Um, and then on top of that, which makes me even more excited because of that, going through that process, I get to have the opportunity to go teach now and share that. That's what wakes me up every single morning and gets excited to go ahead and to, you know, I don't, I, I don't need motivation. That's my inspiration. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. And uh, thank you for explaining that because... Some people, they don't know what they're excited about when they start a business, when they start marketing, when they start something new or even just uh, a thing of that. I want to make a million dollars per year, you know, type of situation. And 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 that sometimes just becomes a lottery thing versus a, a vision and a mission thing uh, for for many people. So thank you again for that. So when you said working harder and smarter, does that also mean effortless? success effortless success is a little different okay. because when you look at effortless success i know that sounds so weird like i remember when i first started coaching and started mentioning that people were like this guy's selling snake oil just he's just this is this, this is not how it works and i'm like 
what do you mean? I go, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, effortless success means this. In, in the business world and in life, we always try to figure things out. The human brain loves certainty, right? It likes to know things. In business, it's even worse because you want to predict your goals and what you want to achieve to, and you think that's the best avenue for you. And sometimes life has a different, has life knows a little bit more than what you can see with your limited perspective. Mm -hmm. So when we get into the realm of effortless success, you're not trying to figure things out. We shift our focus from doing and we take it back to the being element. Now, what's being? Well, being is made up of two things. It's made up of your vibration or the energy that we've been talking about, but it's also made up of your mindset. Okay. So the, the, the vibrational side is your thoughts that you give attention to, the emotions um, that you, you, you allow to experience. And like if you're getting excited about your future self or you're getting excited to work for the day, like those kind of things. And you can't fake this because you can't lie with energy. It's one, people try to fake. You can't fake it. It's, energy is energy. But the other side is your vision on that, right? So this sets the tone of your vibration and, and you get to play in the quantum world a little bit. So when the better, the stronger the vibration or a positive vibration, and then adding that with a mind that's focused, that is um, working through its subconscious and limiting beliefs and so forth. When you merge these two together, now all of a sudden you have something like a very strong signal that you can send out of what you want to experience. So for those who are hearing me, what's the signal we're talking about? Well, if mm -hmm. you want to get scientific, we have an electromagnetic field around us that we emit. And science has proven this. We know this. We, ha we all have it. You've, ha you've experienced it. You walk in, you meet somebody, and you feel really good about that person. Or you meet somebody, and you just have a bad feeling about them. You're picking up on their vibration, that electromagnetic field. The stronger the signal, the more clear it is, the easier you can attract things into your life, right? Mm. So this is universal laws, laws of vibration. Then we've all heard a law of attraction. And then there's the law of manifestation when it manifests in the physical realm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So having all that effortless success happens because the law of vibration states, you can only experience in your life what you're vibrating at. So the way to understand this is like a radio, you're, you're turning, you're using a radio tuner to go to a radio station to listen to specific music. So for example, like I'm from, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. So country music, I like country music. That's 99.5. So if I put the radio tuner to 99.7, I'm not going to get country music. Hmm. If I go to 99.3, not going to get country music. But if I hit 99.5, I'm going to be enjoying some country music. And that's kind of how what we're doing when it comes to the vibrational side. Once you set that tone, then all of a sudden the law of attraction comes and like attracts like. And so, and this is all law of cause and effect. I send the signal out. That's the cause, the effect. It comes back to me. And now how does it become effortless? Well, here's the thing. When you are in the vibration of, let's say you want to be a seven figure business owner, eight figure, nine figure, 10 figure, it doesn't matter. When you're set in that vibration, you will attract people, circumstances, situations, ideas, and so forth that will come to you that will lead to the next law, which is a law of inspired action. You're going to, you're going to feel inspired to take action. You can't ignore this. Hmm. Um, I remember when I was writing my third book, I was moving out of state. I was closing down a business I had for 11 years mm. and my wife was pregnant. I had no intentions of writing a book. My mind could not stop thinking about my next book. Mm. No matter how much I tried to ignore it, it kept bothering me. Like my mind was just like going back to that. I had anxiousness inside me. I'm like, why am I having all this? This doesn't make sense. And I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. I can't stop thinking about something and I'm anxious. Okay. Something's pushing. So all of a sudden I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to entertain this. Let's go ahead. And I reached out to a cover. I'm like, I'm going to go to my cover person and tell them this is what kind of book I want to name it, this and that. And let's just see what comes up. And if it comes out great, then I'll start writing it. And it was like 95% that on. Mm. So this is how like the inspired action side things work mm. Mm. when it comes to these things. And then this is where you don't have to think. This is where you don't have to worry about your next step. You trust the journey. You trust the process. You're going to take action because action has to be there but it's a lot smaller than what we normally are used to experiencing. Oh, Vic, uh, th thank you again for that. But how do you implement that into the business world, the sales world, the marketing world, the technology world? I mean, people will be asking these questions that how do I implement that into, into my uh, corporate or entrepreneur life? Yeah, I mean, we, we, here's the thing. Ideas create, create business, right? When you have an idea, 
Hmm. or you ever have a partnership that came out of nowhere, you met somebody and next thing you know, you're creating a partnership and uh, you're starting to develop this new program or you're starting to have this or that go on or uh, in sales, maybe there's something that you've been, you've been noticing that you're just not getting correctly or all of a sudden, and then hmm. the next, thing you know, somebody refers a book to you and it's the exact book you needed to learn X, Y, Z from, or um, you get exposed to a coach. I can go down a rabbit hole of things. So there's endless things that could come up, but again, it's coming back to, again, what, not only that, what it is that the the vibrational um, of what you need it will always give you what you need, but it's always going to help you based on where you are. So like, like, for example, in my own chiropractic office, when I was shifting my, my practice to more pediatric focus, um, I wanted to have 50% pediatric patient volume. At the time when I made this decision, I was only 5%. Now I didn't I didn't do anything new in my office. I didn't do any marketing. I didn't change anything up. I just kept continuing the same because I was using this formula. I was like, I know as long as I set the intention of where I want to be, and where I want to go, it's all going to work out the way it's supposed to. Okay. Mm. And when I did that six months later, we're at 48%. Mm. Not doing anything, right? I have clients, the same thing where I have one client who's he, he's, uh, he's in the insurance industry and it's the same concept where he business isn't going as well as he likes it to the books of sales aren't going as well, or the book of business is not happening as much as he likes. But I kept saying, focus on what you want to experience. Focus here. This is where you want to go. Things are going to show up for you. He gets a deal with somebody who reaches out to him. Not only get this, not only talk about the person coming to you and attracting a partnership offers him an office, no rent gets the keys to the office and going to give him books of business that she can't do, but he can't. Mm. again, you're going to attract the things that you need. But the problem is our mind goes, you hear this and you're like, you're leaving it up to chance. No way. Mm. When you understand quantum, there is no such thing as chance. Mm. You see, now it becomes, this is what we call radical self-responsibility. This is what we call, you're going to have to step into your power now and really choose because you can use force, but force has an expense to that. That's Newtonian mm-hmm. physics. That's what everyone does. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do, I'm going to, what's the best sales strategies? I'm going to learn everything in the world. Well, here's an example. Why does one person who you can find two people and they do the exact same thing. There is no difference between the two. Why does one thrive like crazy and one doesn't? Mm-hmm. Let's take sports. Look at someone like LeBron James. Physically, strength, speed. He, he, he's one of the most dominant players, correct? Mm-hmm. I'm a little biased. I'm Michael Jordan. I like Michael Jordan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan's the goat, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But Michael Jordan, did he have the, he was he the biggest? No. Was he the tallest? No. Was he the fastest? No. He wasn't any of those things. What made him the goat or what makes him one of the greatest of all time? Mm-hmm. It's where your focus, your mindset, this is why the vibe and mindset plays a huge role in these things. And things will show up and they will work out in that way. It's not up to chance. As much as it sometimes it sounds like that, quantum physics has proven that it isn't chance. And there's so much more science coming through showing and proving that. Yeah, th- thank you so much. Actually, you know, I, I learned uh, something that, you know, the strength plays a, a big role in everyone's life, which is totally fine. Uh, so does speed. But it seems like your answer is going to be mindset is overpowering all those other two items. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I actually put this in a formula. I just started, I just listened, literally did this last week because I was like, how can I simplify everything I teach? Mm. Last 15 years, all my experiences, tying in quantum physics, neuroscience, behavioral neurology, neurolinguistic program. I can go on with all this stuff, but um, that's not important, but just tying this all together. And it really is, is, is you take your vibe and your mindset, you multiply those together, and then you square that. And then you multiply that by action. And then you multi- and that equals your success. So I call this the billionaire success formula because a lot of billionaires actually live in the quantum world. Some of them may not even know it, but they act like that. But most of them do. That's why like someone like Jeff Bezos is like, I don't care what happens right now. I'm focusing. I'm, I'm directing my focus to where I'm going. Hmm. Right. It's an energy hmm. thing. You focus on the future self of who you want to become because your mind can time travel. Hmm. And if you think I'm crazy. I want you to think of something, think of a, a, an old, when, where did you meet your first part your spouse? When did you have your first kid? When, what, what was the first sports you played? I already got you moving into the past, right? What do you have going on tomorrow? There you go. You just moved into the future. So we can time travel. Here's a trick on the, how the mind works though. The mind doesn't know what reality is. It doesn't know 
what you're seeing in the moment and what you create in this imagination. Mm. There is, it doesn't know, it, it looks at both worlds as being true. It's just mm. which one you want to create. Mm. This is a whole nother discussion on visualization and so forth, but this is why mindset. So you take the bite. This is why mindset's so critical uh, because it's, it's the, it's the end all be all. You look at any, um, I love using sports as an example, because you can just see some of the greats. They all have that mindset component to them. Mm. Every single one. There's not one that I don't know. It's just like, I'm going to keep going and going and going. Eventually it's going to work. They're very strategic. They're very, you know, they, they have a certain vision. They have a certain view and they get it done. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again for that, uh, 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 Vic. Let me, let me ask you this. And actually there's a new segment that we have started on season three, which is the rapid fire round for season three. I'm going to come up with some words and sentences and you tell me that, what pops in your head and we'll just go from there. How about that? Oh, this is going to be scary. All right, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, quantum world. What is, uh, man, I'm like, you stunned me on that one. Cause I didn't, I didn't expect you to say that one. Um, what does that quantum world mean to me? Mm. It's everything. It's the, it's, it's, it's the essence of who we are. The, the, the soul world in a sense and how everything works in that way. Okay. Uh, how about automation? Ooh, automation. This makes life easier. Sports zone. The ability to, when two parts of your brain are, I'm going to get neuroscience on you guys, uh, the left brain and the right brain are in what we call hemispheric synchronization. That is the sports zone or the flow state. Okay. <laughs> neuroscience. Ooh, I love this. Um, understanding how the laws of neurology, which creates the laws of kind of how we act and how we respond and how unique we are as humans. Hmm. Flow state. No resistance to all the greatness that you are attracting in your life. Hmm. Energy management. Being able to be hyper uh, focused like a laser and bringing all these points together and then firing that into one direction. Hmm. Effort, success, not effortless, effort, success. Newtonian physics. Okay. How about mindset? End all be all. Failure. No such thing unless you quit. Action. Ooh, action. You got me on that one. Um, Doing. It's a physical force. Doing something. Hmm. Science. Trying to understand life in the essence as best as we can, but always constantly changing. Okay. This is going to be a fun one. <laughs> uh, inception. Inception. Okay. Oh, a fun one. I'm trying to think inception. Uh, I'm trying to think of the definition of inception. Okay. Um, what is the definition of inception? Well, remember that movie that it came out. That's what I'm, I'm getting stunned by it because I'm thinking of the movie and I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see it? No. Okay. Um, how about how about Lord of the Rings? The all-seeing eye. That's in the Lord of the Rings, right? It's been a long time since we've seen it. That's that's what comes to my mind. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Dr. Vic. Uh, an individual who is always constantly learning and evolving and self-assessing and all that fun stuff. Okay. How about Matrix? Ooh. The human collective consciousness. Okay. How about Vic? Not Dr. Vic. Vic. An easygoing fella. That's kind of the same thing as the other one, isn't it? Is it? I think so. Always self of Well, the other one was more about self-growing and evolving and always self-assessing and things like that. Um, yeah, I'm a laid back. Vic, when, I, because when you say it like Vic, I think it's just like a laid back, mm. easygoing guy. Mm. And the last one is back to basics. Going back to the originality of who we are. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for playing the rapid fire. Hopefully I didn't stomp you in any way. I think I stomped you on the first one, actually. 
You did. So if you want, we can ask you that question again. Quantum world now, now that you know what's it all about. Yeah, it's again, it's understanding that I think it'll be the same answer because it's understanding the like the invisible world, understanding that whole thing we can't see. Mm. Yeah, Vic, thank you again for playing the rapid fire. You know, I hope I didn't challenge you and then really stomped you. So, but thank you again for that. I like it because you're, you're one of the things you're doing, at least I was from my perspective, I'm, I'm seeing it as you're also understand having the listeners understand my world a little bit. Cause when you say a word and I have to explain it, it's, it's explaining my world and what that is. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for understanding that, by the way, uh, <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be analyzing me. <laughs> Sorry. That's a, okay. That's the, hey, there's your answer for Vic. I'm always analyzing things. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for that. So before, before I let you go, let me just ask you this one question, right? The, the, smarter as we are the the unsmart that we are because we're still learning right so if i throw you a word called learn and unlearn and relearn how would you define that and how would you explain that to people because we're always relearning right yeah and we're always unlearning so how do you explain that to people we have to understand you know when i try to explain unlearn learn and relearn is we have to understand that we don't Anyone that has any, anyone says they have everything figured out, run away from them because they don't. No one has everything figured out. And it's, it's, we, we, it's like science. We figure something out, right? We get it. Okay. This is how it's going to be. And then all of a sudden we get new information and it's like, ah, okay, we weren't doing this correct. Let me go back now and redo everything that I thought it was. And now let's apply the new stuff. Let's learn how that works and let, let's keep moving forward. And then it comes, something else comes up and you're like, all right, here we go again. And that's kind of like life, right? Mm. You know, even when it comes to healing or growing and expanding, we think, oh, I got that figured out. I went through that in my 20s. No, you didn't. It's going to mm. come again in the 30s or the 40s because as we evolve, so does it. So we have so much conditioning that we've been conditioned through so much stuff that we're always in a pro if we If you want to have a growth mindset and really expand and evolve and really l have the most fulfilling life and have the most experiences, you know, take on the most experiences you can, mm. You have to kind of unlearn everything you learned, go back to being a kid, let that curiosity run wild, then learn, and then relearn new things. And then just always remember, you're going to have to unlearn what you learned, or you're going to add to it or something along those lines, but you're always going to be fine tuning. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at your life 10 years ago, most likely you don't see life like you did 10 years ago, like you do today. That is very, very true. Thank you. Thank you again for that. You know, uh, Vic, before I let you go, um, how was Back to Basics for you? And do you have any last words for all my Back to Basic listeners? No, I love that. I thought this was great. I love the question. I love the rapid fire. Um, like I said, I know I analyzed it. And you didn't want me to do that. <laughs> um, any last things? You know, be if you have children, this is easy for you to learn. Um, but it's one of those, or be aware of, but it's one of those things that we have to try to stop being thinking that we have everything figured out. Like we, in, instead being like, be like a three, four year old, let your imagination run wild. Let your creativity run wild. Um, there's things that we don't understand. The mind can only, the mind can only take on all the knowledge that exists in the world, less than 0. 0.0000, like 1%. It's really nothing. And so when you understand that, we really don't know a lot. And if we can get more into the dance of life and just accept life as it comes, I really believe that's where we start to let life be more colorful. Instead of what we live in the world today is we're always trying to fixate things to what it should be and trying to avoid our pain or try to avoid our fears or try to control the future. But life was never supposed to be that way. And you're talking to a type A driver personality. So I'm all, I used to be all about that. And I think once we are able to break away from that, then we can really enjoy life more. And that's kind of what I want to leave you guys with. Yeah, uh, Vic, thank you. Thank you again for, for being here. You know, uh, I want people to understand, yes, uh, you know, we we are talking about, you know, how people they think when it comes to motivational speaking. But people, they have to understand that these motivational speakings from the business and marketing and technology point of view is also helpful too. And that's why you're here today. And thank you again for explaining that in, in my realm uh, to explain that in, in the basic way, in a fun way. So thank you again, uh, Vic. 
No, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. So guys, we spoke with Dr. Vic today, or I should say Vic, because he's a laid back guy, right? So, and he's a really, really awesome guy, as you know, as you can tell. You know, he definitely analyzed me and I didn't like that, but that's okay because that's what he does. That's what he is. He tries to understand people of how they think. So how to unlearn and relearn and learn, learn, learn. I mean, that's just what he's doing. He's trying to understand how I think. Now, as usual, as always, there's a quote of the day from Back to Basics. And Dr. Vic is actually going to be surprised because I'm actually taking his words into this as a quote for Back to Basics. And here's a quote that what he usually says on his website. There are no rules to life except that ones you create. You have to make that own rule when it comes to your sales and marketing and technology and your success when it comes to being a billionaire or a millionaire or even a thousand bucks because every success counts and that's what it all takes. Guys, as usual, as always, what do we always say at the end of the episode? Everything in life goes back to basics and that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care. God bless. And I will see you next time on Back to Basics. Vic, how was that? That was awesome, man. I love it. Yeah? You got me with the quote at the end. That was cool. I, I got your quote. So, you know, I usually do quotes at the end of the episode. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, I did, yeah. I was like, I was wondering which one you were going to choose. And you said, oh, he doesn't know this. I was like, all right, he chose my favorite quote. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, I was trying to find something really, um, really close to what you are all about. And it, it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, thank you again for tuning in to Back to Basics and listening to the the excellent uh, episode that we had today with our guest. You know, with your love and support, we do need you to at least rate our show, review our show, because it does make us stronger day by day, week by week, as I usually say on my episodes. And there are three things in this episode that it makes a hit for me which is the content, the guest, and definitely the host. So guys, take care. God bless. And remember, everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care. God bless. And see you next time on Back to Basics.